time to get your fix. It's a horrible gaming podcast. It's not good. It's not great. Horrible gaming podcast. It's not even what you would call fair. It's really not that good. Horrible Gaming Podcast. Hello, everyone. My name is Zachariah Van Siders with Old Man Gaming. With me, as always, is... Logan, a.k.a. Night645. And this is a Horrible Gaming Podcast. We've done it. We made it to episode 10, a decade of episodes. I guess that's not quite right, but... Um, just want to say disclaimer up front and most likely you're definitely going to hear it today. Uh, you might hear my kid in the background. You might hear something in the background. Um, we're not professionals. We don't do this for money, so we're not going to go back and edit it. All right. Last week we reached out. We, we asked the fan traction question and, uh, we actually had kind of uh, low responses this week. Hey, people get busy. Um, I do want to say before we talk about the question that we did get one positive comment from an Ace Hardy uh, on our last episode. Uh, Let me just read it for you because I always promise to read stuff. Uh, Ace Hardy says, keep it up. And then he did some emoticons of like uh, uh, flexing muscle and 100%. Thank you, Ace Hardy. We will try to keep it up as best as we can. Um... As far as the question goes, we asked, uh, what's the longest you've ever gone without playing games that you've chosen to do, uh, was, was the caveat on it that not that you were forced to, but that you've chosen to. Um, so, uh, Logan, uh, this was your question idea. So I want to hear your answer. My answer is two weeks. (laughs) Sophomore year. Uh, I really, it was the start of basketball season, and I really wanted to get in shape. I wanted to go out for it, so I just decided not to play video games for about two weeks, and then th- that habit got broke, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, two, last long. two weeks ain't bad. I mean, two weeks is pretty good. Uh, oh, I, I know. I ha- I don't think I can think of one. I, I hate to be the guy who can't contribute to the segment, but I can't think of a time when I force my... I mean, I can think of times when people force me not to play video games, but... The grind never stops. Yeah, the grind never stops. It just never stops. Like, I'm always playing. Um, I Really, what I should have done is stop playing it and then go to some sort of school to, <laughs> to, do, to do game stuff with it. But uh, I did not do that. So I'm a 38-year-old who does podcasts in his basement. That's what I do. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So uh, our fan interaction question for this week, we want to ask what's your play style? As in, what kind of game do you like to play? Uh, What kind of game do do you like to get into and stay into? Are you a fighting game person? Are you a person who just wants that narrative story uh, to do that either once or more than once. Are you a grinder, uh, looter shooter? You know, whatever it is, uh, whatever it is, whatever it may be. Um, so whatever you like to play, uh, we want to hear about it. Uh, some sort of small comment below, or of course, you can always find us on Facebook, Old Man Gaming. One. So, Zach, I've heard a lot of people have gotten to the Borderlands Endgame now because mm-hmm. it's been out for a little bit. Yeah. And I've heard that you are one of those people. Is it, Are these rumors true? Uh, yes. These rumors, the rumors are true. I, the rumor mill. <laughs> everybody, was, I know everybody out there was waiting on bated breath for Disciple Hard Rock to get to the Endgame, but he's, he's at the Endgame. Uh, yes, I am at the Endgame. Um, and it is... I'm pleasantly surprised, let's put it that way. Uh, I've been kind of searching for like negative like ways to look at this game negatively just because I feel like every time we talk about it, it seems like they're paying us money to talk about it. Um, but we are not sponsored, and uh, I gotta say, they did a lot of things right, and it's kept me coming back um, quite a bit. So... Uh, did you ever play any of the other Borderlands games? Or are you like I have not total? Okay, 
So w one of the things that was really irritating about the other Borderlands games, other than the instancing and stuff that we already talked about that they fixed, is for me anyway was the end game. When you got to the end of a Borderlands or Borderlands 2, the only thing you could do is you could go into this uh, 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 true vault hunter mode is what they call it, which you play the game again, but everything's harder and a little bit more scaled to you, you know? Mm. Then they also had these things called OP levels, which you didn't really get anything special for it, but the levels of the bad guys just got insane. So it was kind of like almost more like a challenge than any sort of like real grind to it. Mm -hmm. um, and that was it. That was the end game. Uh, the things that irritated me about that is I don't necessarily always want to play the game over again. And if you stay in the game itself uh, and you like keep doing it on base mode, your experience, the amount you get for fighting bad guys goes way down and you don't really level up to the point where I've put tons and tons of hours into both of my games, both of those games, and I never really hit the end game. I never really hit level 50, which it is big. Everybody hits level 50. I never really hit it because I never really did the true vault hunters. Mm -hmm. That being said... They've added this thing called Mayhem Mode, which is absolutely awesome. What it is is after you beat the game, you can – they're like these difficulty modifiers that you can just put on the normal game. And it immediately sta scales all the bad guys to your level. Uh, so right off the bat, you're getting more experience points for that. Plus, there's all these weird modifiers that you can play with. So – it's almost beneficial to skip some side missions so that you can go back and do like cleanup. But when you're going back and doing cleanup on side missions you miss the first time around, you're not getting nothing for it. You're getting amazing loot. You're getting amazing experience, um, which I I just love. I love that part. I love the fact that I never feel like, and I probably will play a little True Vault Hunter with this game, but I never feel like I have to play True Vault Hunter mode to be on par with other other players and other other people that is incredible and borderlands if you're listening sponsor us but anyway <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely honestly i know we always say we're not sponsored i will totally sell out like if there's somebody out there who wants to give me money to pimp their stuff i will 100 percent take it and anybody who's listening to this needs to know that ahead of time i will 100 percent sell out uh, I wonder. I wonder if we just start saying that we're sponsored by people, if they will actually sponsor us. I think we might get sued faster. <laughs> like we, we specifically did not sponsor them. Like we, we don't want them to, to be sponsored by. We don't want them associated with our brand. <laughs> I mean, Gearbox as a company is doing a lot of stuff wrong. Like if we want to talk about that. Uh, the whole weird fight between Gearbox and Troy Baker got even more complicated this week. Uh, I don't know if you know about that. I do not know about that. You do not know about that. Okay, so do you know the how it what it started as like a few months ago with the whole like back and forth between Troy Baker and Randy Pitchford? Do you know about that? Not at all. Oh Inform my god. Me. Okay, so like Gearbox is hot water for Borderlands 3 has all been behind the scenes because it always is because Randy Pitchford is kind of a giant psychopath. And uh, so he didn't bring back the the voice of Claptrap. The voice of Claptrap in the third game is a different voice. And this was okay. the first problem that they had. And the reason he is a different voice, according to the guy who originally did Claptrap, is he was like, well, when we first did the Borderlands game, I was just kind of working there and he just asked me to do the voice as like a joke. And then I, it became like a major character. But this time when he wanted me to come back, I don't work there anymore. And he wouldn't pay me to be a voice actor. What? Yeah. Yeah. So that was the start of their problems on that front. Then uh, the voice of Reese, uh, he was the voice of Reese in the Tales from the Borderlands character uh, game where all the characters from Tales from the Borderlands actually, well, most of them made it into Borderlands 3. Um mm. Troy Baker, who is a famous voice actor uh, in the in the community, uh, was Reese. Well, he uh, <laughs> uh, he wasn't invited back either. And when he was asked for comment, he straight up said he was like he was like they didn't ask me to come back. 
I wanted to do it. I was expecting to do it, and they just never asked me to come back. So then Randy Pitchford came back and said Troy turned it down. So then Troy turned it back. It turned into this flame war on on Twitter. So Troy came back and said, uh, I never turned it down. I never said no. He should fact check his statements before he makes them. Um, so like there, there was this back and forth between them back then, right? Okay. That seemed to die down a couple of weeks before the game came out. Well, just recently, just this last week, Troy Baker was asked about it again, and he straight up said, uh, I don't want to, this is paraphrasing, because I don't want a straight quote, because I don't have it in front of me, but for the most part, what he said was that they wouldn't hire him because he's a union, a union actor. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Which caused all sorts of problems, because at first they were like, because at first he was like, they did call me, they said, do you want to do this? I said, yes. And then they just refused to make it happen. And then when they probed him about that, he was like, it wasn't about money. It wasn't about scheduling. They just won't go union. And he just left it at that, which caused a whole big controversy because on one half, you can't do that. You can't like that's <laughs> on, on the, that's actually illegal. Um, and then exactly. on the other half of it, um, and then on the other half of it, uh, uh, where was I? Oh, and then on the other half of it, um, there are actors who are in the voice actors union in this game. So Gearbox came back and said, you know, again, this is a paraphrase, but basically they were like, we hire union actors. We have to hire union actors because we conform with the Texas, uh, employment law. But at the very end, they were like, uh, we would love to collaborate with Troy again in the future. And then they basically took credit for his career I, in a very nice way. But they were like, they were like, we, we're very happy with all the success he's found since he started with us. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So like that kind of stuff is real bad. And Gearbox just, Randy Pitchford does that shit and he's kind of a loon. But the game itself is really good. The end game is really good. Uh, they also have a mode called Proving Ga- Grounds, which is like a 20-minute, uh, you get in, uh, you get out sort of thing. Um, and it, it's great. They have like a, they also have a horde mode type thing where it's just kind of survival pouring on enemies. So if you don't want to just like go back and do cleanup or go do Vault Hunter, you can just spawn into these modes and you get stuff based on your level. Um, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that just keeps bringing me back to this game. Um, they're also, they also seem to be adopting more of a games as surface model for their post launch support, mm-hmm. uh, because they're going to be doing, uh, a limited time event around Halloween. So you're going to get like, I think like three or four weeks to play it. And then that stuff will go away like a limited time event for like the other games as service. Of course. Um, and then they're, they're, they have a roadmap. It's kind of a weaker roadmap as to telling you what it is, but they do have a roadmap as to, you know, stuff coming up. I'm not super hyped about the paid DLC okay. part. Um, I, I would say that if I have one complaint in this world right now, uh, and the way people are doing stuff, I think it's a little short-sighted to do uh, paid DLC right now. Oh, I, I can definitely agree. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think that developers should get money for their work, and I don't know that it was a good idea for the the business as a whole to stop making people pay for DLC, but everybody has... And I think them being the only company that's like, you got to pay for our DLCs when Division 2, it's all free. Uh, What's the other ones? Um, Breakpoint is, I think, all free. Uh, Destiny, well, Destiny, you got to pay for them, but Destiny made the original game itself free. Yeah. So, like. That was a huge deal. Yeah, it's a huge deal. So, like, I mean, I think that, like, them just. Yeah, you got to pay sixty dollars for the game, and you got to pay for the DLCs. Is, is a little short sighted on their part. I just, I just do. And I'm. It, it, it's only that way, just because, just like you said, everybody else it went the other way. 
And that's that's the thing. And and I I hate to say like personally I don't necessarily think that was the right idea for the company and I'm sure that there's going to be people out there who are not happy with me saying that I'm on board for paid DLC, but if I'm not paying for part of the original game, like I don't like it when they do that. But like if it's actual more content for the game, I don't understand why I shouldn't have to pay for it a little bit, you know? Yeah. But like to do paid DLC in the current marketplace, it's almost like a bad word because all the DLC anybody puts out for these types of games is free. And I'm actually surprised they haven't gotten more backlash for that. That's true. That's true. I mean, and I'm not necessarily saying I agree with it. I want them to get money for good stuff. But when every other company and game system around you is saying our DLC is going to be free, I don't know how they can get away. I mean, they've got to have some balls to say, no, you got to pay for ours, you know? Well, if they're making money off of it. <laughs> that is true. It is the highest selling Gearbox game, the fastest selling Gearbox game in history, from what I understand. Now, while we usually keep our shameless self-promotion for the end of the show, I want to speak on a momentous occasion. Uh, mark cal- calendars, ladies and gentlemen, because today's the day, night 645, He's got some new footage out there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I actually posted for the first time in decades. He did. He did. And they're very good. And uh, There's a PUBG one and a Brawlhalla one. Uh, both are really fun, but anybody who's ever played PUBG needs to watch the PUBG one because there are two times, uh, there are two grenade throws. I don't want to ruin it, but it is spectacular. I, I can't, I laughed so hard when I watched it the first time. And Knights can attest to it because I was watching it on my Xbox and I partied <laughs> up with him and I just lost my mind um, on those grenade throws. I knew exactly what he was laughing at, too. <laughs> like, well, once he started laughing, I knew where he was at in that video. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so everybody needs to check that out. Um, are you going to be doing more? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I already have my next one all ready to go. So by next week, I'll have another one up. Oh, sweet. And it's definitely hard to to post a lot, especially with, like, highlight clips and stuff. Because, I, I don't know, since I did take broadcasting for a couple of years, right. I really take pride in what I put out there. Right. So if I feel like something isn't to that part, I won't post it. Right. And for a while there, I was having problems with my audio uh, on a lot of my clips because I post, so I make it through Xbox and then I end up posting it through my phone right. to YouTube. And it turns out I had to like clear the cat, the cache or whatever from, from YouTube on my phone so that the audio would sync up perfectly. You need to get like a decent desktop. Oh yeah. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then you can, re- I can even show you the. The software I use is not is not hard to to master, honestly. Because if it well, was, I wouldn't do the videos I do. Well, well you know, I'm gonna get a PC eventually. Right. And right. <laughs> keep talking about it. Perfectly. Keep talking about it. I I think I think It'll be yeah, a while, I think your but, stuff yeah. would definitely benefit from a PC. I will say I think it's harder to do highlight videos. The highlight, the few highlight videos I have on my channel. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing, but they took a lot more work than the Let's Plays, which is kind of crazy to say that, but it's it's just true. Like a Ooh. Let's Play, even doing it the way I do it, you know, I set up the audio recording stuff on my phone, and then I sync up the capture on Xbox and on my phone, um, and then I just I play it for for two hours, and then all I have to do is sync it up. Like it's it's really it's just like as easy as slapping in the the sound and slapping in the video, and then just making sure that they're on the right track, and then bam, it's done. Whereas a highlight video, you really gotta like find what you're looking for, which I think is a little bit more difficult. Oh, exactly, exactly. And then also you have to do the highlights. <laughs> that's that's right. another thing. Right. <laughs> because in some ways, I can force it, and I, I've been. Zach knows this. I've played with him a lot where I've forced highlights, where I've like really went for that. Right. But, right. but uh, you can't do that a lot. Like right. a lot of the time, it just has to happen naturally. So you just got to play a lot. Right. 
Well, and that's what's even what's what I've found even harder is uh, uh, you can't like, yeah, like you can't just like set the recorder. Like with a let's play, I could just set the recorder for an hour and I, I get an hour of footage, you know, or even the yeah. reviews. I get an hour of, I, I, with the reviews, usually it's three different hour sections, three to five. And then I, those are the hardest ones for me because I have to like cut them up. But like with the let's play, you just set it. Whereas with a highlight reel, if you did a highlight, you have to like somehow get back to the thing. You know what I mean? You have to in the game like capture the thing and hope you captured enough to catch the highlight. And if you're in the middle of a firefight in PUBG and you kill one guy and there's three other guys, you're dead if you try and if you try and get the highlight, you know? Oh, exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's tough. I, I definitely it's, agree with that. It's tough biz. It's a tough biz on that. On that it, it, def- it definitely is. <laughs> definitely is. <laughs> but you know, go check it out. It's fantastic. It is fantastic. Those grenade like, uh, throws. Drop me a comment. Whatever. Those, those grenade throws are worth a segment all by themselves. Like they're just they're so amazing. I I love those grenade throws. Um, okay. Kobe. Coco. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we're a little bit late on this one, but I want to spend some time on it. Uh, GameStop, uh, kind of. They remodeled one of their stores, um, and everybody's saying that this is what all the GameStops are going to look like, and we actually even talked about uh, this a while ago. Um, a long time ago. Just a warning to everybody out there, my kid has made it down the stairs, so it is highly possible you will all be hearing her for the finally for, for the first time. So Yes. She is now playing with something she shouldn't be playing with. And is making her way into the basement room. So this should be interesting. But anyway, so the GameStop, uh, we had talked about this a little bit about them becoming a cafe was the rumor. Um, and uh, basically they released some leaked footage, which I don't think was leaked. I think I, I think they wanted it to get out there. But one oh, of their they stores they did. remodeled. I don't remember where it was, like Oregon or Oklahoma or something. And uh, It was Oklahoma. It was Oklahoma, okay. Uh, they remodeled the store. And uh, basically everybody's saying this is what all the GameStops are going to look like. And you can find footage on it. Just search GameStop Remodel on YouTube. You'll find it. Um, So, well, I'll go to you first, Logan, because I have some thoughts on this. What do you think about the remodel? You got to see it for the first time today. It it looked a lot better than I thought it would. Yeah. Yeah. It looked a lot better than I thought it would. Um, I thought that it wasn't going to be even half as good as it was. Right. Their whole chill out area, that's fantastic. Um, yeah. I, I like how they still have the games built up, and it still looks like a GameStop. It still looks yep. like it used to, but then they added that whole ha- hangout space, and it looks a lot more comforting. Yes, yes. I So... I am really happy with the remodel, like, and I would be really interested. I, I keep trying to get a GameStop employee to come on this podcast. Nobody wants to, <laughs> for probably for obvious reasons. Um, Just but, show up uh, at GameStop. Hey, you want to be on a pet podcast? <laughs> you want to get on a podcast and talk shit about your, your place of employment? Um, <laughs> but uh, one thing I got to say, um, so we've talked a lot about digital sales, uh, versus physical sales in the past. And I have said how while digital sales are the way we're going and it's nice, I don't like the disappearance of the physical sales because you know it takes some freedom and it takes some equity away from the players and the owners of these games. Um, so I buy my games physically. I, I always will because trade-in is, it, is worth something whereas digital is not. Um, well, I will as long as I can. Let's put it that way. And don't get me wrong. There are services out there that I, I'm going to get on a rant. I don't want to get on a rant. Um, but, but anyway, so one thing I like about this is it almost feels like they've kind of targeted uh, my generation. Like almost they've targeted, they've, they've sat down and they were like, who really comes into these things anymore? Oh, it's the guys who also played Nintendo and Genesis and Nintendo 64. Um it's those guys uh, who still actually buy physical games. Let's make the store more appealing to them. Fully agree. Okay. So what I love about their whole thing right now, they set it up so that for your generation, they have well, the retro on games. I'm going to yell at my kid. Stop! 
Get out of dog food. Stella, <laughs> you're on a podcast right now being bad. This will be cemented on YouTube forever. Stella, uh, get in here. We love you, Stella. You want to come say something on the podcast? Oh, please say like a curse word or oh, something. That'd be so yeah. great. She's not going to say She'll say gibberish. Come here. Talk into the phone. Say hi. <laughs> hi. Ooh, that was a strained hi. She oh. is feeling sick okay. out there, everybody. How you feeling? Feel a little bit better? Better. Feel better? Okay. Stay out of the dog food, all right? All right. So sorry to interrupt you there, Logan. You can keep right. going. <laughs> So uh, <laughs> I, I was saying, I, I think that they really fed into having the retro theme for your generation. But then at the same time, they made my generation really want to go because they made it more welcoming and more of like an esport area. Like yeah, and, and I, I know like I, I don't want to get too into it, but a lot of gamers do have problems like meeting friends and stuff, especially when they're younger. This is and, true. And with, then, with they the also hang- have a hard time finding a place to play sometimes, and this is oh, definitely exactly. a place to play. I, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. And I, I hadn't thought of that. I had thought about it from my old man perspective, but that's that's true. And I, I, I think this helps every, especially if they do, ser- what everybody's saying, which is they're going to serve like snacks and maybe coffee drinks, and, and that would be amazing. How amazing would that oh. be? Oh, exactly. To like exactly. go to a place. Like, they, they don't have those places anymore. They, they, those places just don't exist anymore. And when I was younger and Xbox had first come out and there was all the LAN parties and stuff, there were stores and stuff that you would just go to and you would just hook up all your Xboxes and play. Um, they don't have places like that anymore. And I, I think this is a really good idea. I mean, will it work long term? I have no idea. But, like... I, I, for one, am excited for my GameStop up the street to switch to this. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah. This, in, in my high school, they used to have a club, and it was called Smash Bros. Club. And it was Super Smash Bros. just on a projector, right. and you'd get a bunch of people to come play this. It was a blast. Everyone had a, a super fun time. It was a great way to interact with yes. other people. And that's what GameStop is doing. A place to all hang out, game, and have fun. Yes. I had the same thing in my school, but it was StarCraft. We're we, not sponsored. We would get... <laughs> I get... If StarCraft is paying us money, like, I, that, that's a scoop in itself. No, uh, no. But, I, just, I just have to lay that in there every time that sponsored. we start talking too good of a place. <laughs> um. But we had StarCraft, and we would hook up all the computers in the computer lab and all the computers in the history lab, and we would get nine players in one game of StarCraft. See, that's fantastic. It was phenomenal. It was wonderful. And I, it, it's, it's definitely a, you know, just the LAN parties. We used to get friends over and just hook up our Xboxes and run Halo together. You know, that stuff doesn't exist anymore, and it's sad. Even... Uh, you know, when me and even as recently as like Xbox 360, me and uh, my uh, my Phil Billy, friend friend of the show, Borderlands expert, back when Borderlands 2 came out, we had both pre-ordered it. We got two other friends together, <clears throat> excuse me, and we we actually brought an extra TV in and did like a LAN party on it. You couldn't even do that now. Like everybody's TV is like mounted to their wall and they're all huge and if they're not huge you can't see everything and like you're like the Xbox like you you couldn't even hook an Xbox to an Xbox. You would have to like go you know, I had to literally go over to his house, which is nice. I could just go over to his house, call my profile up and play split screen with him, but uh, still I I would love a place where you could go and just play video games with other people. That's in person instead of you know meeting them online and i really like i really like this design fully fully agree yeah and i i like the fact that they're still selling games too because that was the other thing like i had heard rumors that they weren't actually gonna sell any games anymore and that would have made me super depressed but they are selling games so that's what i want i i also really wish they'd find some way for me to rent a game 
Maybe there is. Maybe. I would, they had a program for like a cup of coffee and then they stopped doing it. But it was basically like if you had pro, you could take a pre-owned game home. You could just have one pre-owned game home with you. And you could, if you brought it back, you could switch it out for something else. I would love that. I would even pay an extra fee for that. Like, that would be amazing. Like a membership? Yeah, like I would pay a little bit. I mean, I wouldn't pay a ton extra, but I would definitely pay a little bit extra to be able to just be like, that game is coming with me. I'm going to go home and play it, you know, right. until my heart's considered. There are a lot of games out there right now that I'm not going to spend $60 for that I want to play. Uh, Control is one of them. I'm not going to spend $60 on that game. Oh, I'm sorry. Control, I'm sure it's a good game, and uh, I'm sure people worked hard on it. But it is a single-player narrative with absolutely no grinding or end game, which means that I'm going to play it for however many hours the story has, probably 20 to 30, and then it's going to be done. And I'm not going to drop $60 for that. I just won't. I feel like that's uh, the problem with a lot of single-player games yeah. nowadays because you can't play it after you beat the campaign. Yes. You already, you already beat the game. You know, and that's, you know, that's something that bothers me about how people look at video games right now. There are so many people out there who are just so like upset when a game gets announced as a games as service or when a game gets announced that it's not going to like be single player. Like I don't want single player. Like, okay, well, let me take that back. I love stories. I love a good story. I like the Borderlands story. I, that's not going to keep me coming back forever. I want a game that if I drop money on it, anytime I want to play it, I'm going to have some fun with it, period. Agreed. You know, and and that's what I look for in games now. That's I I look for games like Skyrim. I look for games like and and Skyrim's a single player, but there's just so much to do in it. Um, it's so great, especially with mods. Right, I love games as service. When when they say games as service, I'm like, great. That means I'm spending sixty dollars to have a game that's going to constantly get stuff for the next five to ten years. Yeah, that's what I want. That's what I want. And while it's weird that we live in a world where, especially coming from a guy who this comes from the old era of video games, but it's weird that we live in a world where you could buy a game and play it indefinitely <laughs> and, right. and never have to buy. There are people who buy systems just for one game and they play that one game all the time. That's it. Uh, I still, that's what I want. I want that out of my experience. I want that to be able to come back to the game constantly over and over again. I want my money out of it. And uh, I'm not talking about the indie games. The indie games are great. They're fine. But they're also cheaper, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So yeah. I, if I'm dropping $60 on a AAA game, I want to be playing that thing for as long as I can possibly play it, you know? Fully agreed. Fully and agreed. I don't understand why everybody – like when – now don't get me wrong. Anthem was a bad game. But Anthem was not a bad game because it was a games of service. Anthem was a bad game for many other reasons. A plethora of terrible, terrible reasons. Bad. But when it was announced as a games of service, everybody was like, oh man, a games of service. Like, I was like, are you kidding me? You, you mean you get the mechs with the guns forever? Like why is, why, so you want your experience with the mechs and the guns to end? I, I don't understand that. I mean, I, I just, I don't know. That's that's my feeling on the games of service. So I don't know how we got on this subject. What do we digress from? I don't know. I think it was Anyways. a team stop remodel. I don't know how we got there. <laughs> All right. Fantasy Corner. We are going to do a little bit different because Fantasy Corner, it gets harder and harder to come up with the questions every week. But we decided to do something a little bit different and do if we're making like uh, based on true events movie of something that happened in a game world, whether it be a games production, whether it be a, a war between companies, whether it be a, a war between people within games, like what's the movie? What, what, what would be your pitch for a movie, for a, for a games industry movie? I know it's not as sexy as some of our other topics, but I thought it'd be fun. So uh, take it away, Logan. In a world where... <laughs> Two colonies combined. They they will have to battle that out. There's only room for one. It will be console wars. 
<laughs> and it's going to be more of like a tribal movie. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be fantastic. It, it, there's no realness to this movie. It's just going to be Xbox vs. PS4, and then we're going to make a prequel to the movie where where PC shows up, and they got to team up, obviously. Can I ask you but, a question? When I yeah. when I ask a Fantasy Corner question, is like the first thought in your head, how do I cheat at this? Yes. Jesus. You can't stop my imagination. Okay? There has to be rules, Logan. There has to be rules. <laughs> Otherwise, we're living in anarchy. <laughs> you can't stop the imagination, okay? Okay. All right. Well. Uh, oh, so you, okay, okay. You know how awesome it would be to see two armies set up, and you just got a big, big old Xbox flag and I a have, big old PS4 flag <laughs> charging at each other. I have never said your cheats aren't fun. <laughs> It'd be fantastic. I've just said they're cheating. <laughs> I wish I was a billionaire so all these random ideas could actually happen and I, I can want make this, zero I, money this, off of them but I still want oh, the switch streamer uh, yes. fighting game I, I still want that I still think about that in my head and what that would look like um, that'd, that'd be uh, so good mine is less sexy than a whole bunch of anarchy cheating that Logan just said <laughs> uh, I would want to see uh, I'm actually going to do two though so I will cheat a little bit uh, wow. my main one that I'd want to see, I didn't want to just do this one because I'm sure everybody out there thinks that I'm just like an Xbox fanboy all the time. So uh, I didn't want to just do this one and like cement that stereotype of me, but I would really want to see Phil Spencer's story and where he came from with the Xbox, like the original Xbox one launch to come in and take over for, uh, I can't remember the guy who had it who was screwing everything up, but to take over for that guy and just turn that company around into what it is right now. I, I want to watch that story. I want to watch. And Phil Spencer is an incredibly charismatic, cool dude. Um, I'm not going to lie. I, I do. I do have bias towards Phil Spencer. I think he's one of the coolest guys in video gaming right now. And, uh, I think that would be a great movie, but that's fanboy stuff. I know everybody's out there. is like, Oh God, Zach and his Xbox love. Um, <clears throat> so, if I didn't do that, I would take a story about Randy Pitchford. And I know everybody's like, well, he's a dick. Why would we do a movie about him? Well, I hate to tell you, uh, Mark Zuckerberg was a dick and the social network was pretty good. Like, movies about dicks, when it comes to true stories, tend to be kind of good. So, uh, I would lo- and I'd love to see... Like a real take on all the behind the scenes insanity that's gone down at his company and the shit that he's done and just It'll him be as just a person. Like Wolf on Wall Street. What? It'll be just like Wolf on Wall Street, but with him. Yes. Yes. Oh my god, yes. I bet you he has those meetings too, where he just comes out and starts swearing at everybody and hitting a microphone into his face. Right. I have no doubt that's the kind of guy Randy Pitchford is. And I would love to see that movie. I really would because he is – I'm not saying he's a good guy. He's not. But without him, gaming wouldn't be what it is today. And that's one of the weirdest things. It's one of those things where you're like, man, I hate that guy. But he's kind of a genius on a lot of points. And if he wasn't around, uh, gaming wouldn't be as cool as it is. I mean, it's like he's a dick who screws over voice actors. But he also kind of made Borderlands 3. So it's kind of like <laughs> like he's kind of responsible for Borderlands. Like uh, <clears throat> it's, uh, he's kind of responsible for the looter shooter genre. Like it's, it's kind of one of those things where I'd love to see the story behind that, you know. Like, it's, it's almost like Bill Gates. Bill Gates is an asshole, but without him, we don't have computers, you know? Oh, exactly, exactly. So, like, uh, uh, I would love to see that movie. And that's, that's, that, that would be definitely my make right there. I don't know how you'd get it, because you know Randy isn't going to tell the truth on anything, but... All right. With that, we come to the end of episode 10. And, uh... This has been a crazy ride, guys. Uh, I'm kind of surprised we're still doing it. We, we've still managed to keep it together. And I'm very happy to say that uh, that there are people still watching this and responding. And uh, we're up to 45 subscribers now. I'd like to make it to 50. So please share, like, subscribe. You can find us on Facebook. Um, 
if you like us, tell your friends about us. We, we really, I want to grow this. Um, I don't know where it goes because I realized that if I ever start making money off these, uh, my disclaimer would be useless and I would have to be a normal podcast and then I would kind of destroy myself. But still, I want this to get bigger. So please go out there, like and subscribe and whatever. But um, Knights, uh, what would you like to promote? I would like to promote our podcast so that it gets 50 subscribers. Woo! Yeah. But um, <laughs> my YouTube and Night Space 645, just like I said, dropped a video. Could have dropped more videos soon. Love you guys. Uh, as far as me, uh, again, uh, Old Man Gaming. Uh, I do a review on Monday. I do Predator vs. Prey on Wednesdays for now. I do Borderlands 330 on Thursdays. And then uh, I do this show every Friday. We record on Wednesday, but we do it every Friday. So uh, please check out any content there that you'd like to check out. And, uh, uh, you know, as long as you guys keep watching this and keep listening to it, we'll keep making it. And uh, thank you again. We'll see you next week.